I totally forgot the fact that I had to turn on the MKE 600 to record this audio. <laughs> and that's something you have to remember. I was looking at my camera screen and I thought like, who the audio is not recording for some reason and what could it be? Well, you have to turn on the microphone. So that's something that you have to keep remembering. Other microphones like uh, Rode Video Micro or something like that, uh, MKE 400 also like when you just plug in, the microphone instantly powers on. But in this case, the MKE 600, the microphone does not power on by itself. You need to turn it on manually. So that's something you might want to remember if you're going to use MKE 600. And so far we've been listening to the audio with the air condition on and this is how they sound. This is MK600, this is NTG5, and this is Rode NT1 Gen5. First of all, why am I even making this video? Every time I make a microphone comparison video, there are so many people asking, hey, how do these two microphones compare indoors, not outdoors? This is a microphone that is made to be recorded indoors. This is a studio microphone. This is a voiceover microphone. But this, on the other hand, is an outdoor microphone, MK600. And this is supposed to be used outdoors. But many people are interested to know how, how they compare indoors. And if I have to recommend any audio device to be recorded indoors, or outdoors. I highly recommend these two. MK600 is actually perfect for outdoor audio recording and Rode NT1 Gen 5 is perfect for indoor audio recording and NTG5 is somewhere in the middle. Why MK600 is perfect? Because it has the capability to record either using the XLR output or it can give out the 3.5 millimeter jack output. MK600 is directly connected to the camera and this is how it sounds, the audio right out of the video. And that's the purpose this microphone MK600 is built for. Whereas the NTG5 is more of a professional microphone. You might need an external recorder like Zoom F3. And Zoom F3 is what's recording the audio right now in 32-bit float. In this video, you're going to see two main comparisons. One, NT1 Gen 5 compared to the Sennheiser MK600 via this 3.5 millimeter jack because the MK600 can take up two configurations. One is 3.5 millimeter jack and the other is the XLR cable. So. Let's hear the differences between both of them. And we have a, a neutral party here, that's NTG5, and you're going to listen to the audio through that as well. You make your decision which of these audio samples you like and prepare to buy that. I am turning off the air condition. Yeah. I have turned off the air condition and the computer, so this room just has my voice being reflected around the particles around. Here on either sides, I have the lights and the ceiling is about uh, half a meter above me and I'm 1.75 meters tall, so you can estimate how the reflections work for you. When I record audio indoors, I just use this NT1 Gen 5 to voice over even with the air condition on and the computer fans on. And the audio from this NT1 Gen 5 is absolutely fantastic. I love the audio quality from this NT1 Gen 5 compared to both these microphones here. Before we start the audio samples, I have to say that the NTG5 on my left is on the same distance as the MKE 600 and both are pointing towards my mouth. If you were to move the microphones away a bit so that it's out of the frame, and this is how they sound. This is the audio sample from NTG5 and this is the audio sample from MKE600. If you were to use these microphones in your room that is untreated for sound, this is the audio how it would sound. Whenever I record voiceovers, I actually come a bit closer to this microphone. This is a condenser microphone and this is supposed to be used in this range. And you're listening to MKE600 at the distance of 15 centimeters and Rode NTG5 in about 15 centimeters and this is how they sound. Both are pointing towards my mouth. The room is relatively quiet and this is how they sound. This is the audio sample when I'm keeping quiet and without any movement. Just my breathing. And there was a bike passing by, so it's quite loud. It's quite a noisy environment here. You could hear all the sirens around on the road. You could see all the bike. You could hear all the bikes going around. You could hear the doors smashing on the neighbors. So there's some activity going on and everything will be picked up by these cameras. If not, I will be very surprised. I don't intend to use these shotgun microphones indoors at all and I don't recommend it either. But if you have no choice, if you had to choose any one of these microphones to be used, 
in both indoors and outdoors, I highly recommend you to go with the MK600 rather than either of these two because that is more versatile with the XLR cable and the 3.5 millimeter jack output. Very versatile. But if you have the option and money to invest in any of two microphones, I would recommend to get the MK600 and NT1 Gen 5. Here is a sample of audio from MK600 recorded directly into DJI Mic 2 32 bit float. And this is how it sounds. If there is any difference, please let me know in the comments down below. I don't think there should be any difference, but if there is, let me know. Also, it's highly important that you use any sort of uh, noise isolation or voice isolation or even a really good sound processing software in your computer to process this raw audio into your computer because I find that the processed audio is so much better compared to the raw audio. So even if you're getting the raw audio, please try to process it for the best audio quality that you can give the audience because audience are the people who are listening to your audio by the end of the day. In the end of the day towards the end of the day. Yeah, for the final bit, this is the audio from Sennheiser MK600 connected directly to the Zoom F3 via the XLR cable. So this is how it sounds. And you can know if there's any difference between this audio quality versus the 3.5 millimeter jack audio quality. And there's no change in the positioning. If you are further away, like in this distance, I'm not trying to raise my voice, but I'm just talking in my usual sound. And this is how it sounds. And this is how it sounds. Hope you're able to hear me properly. If I'm gonna come closer, this is how they sound. It sounds, and so <laughs> you can have an idea about how the distance from the mic changes the microphone uh, quality. And yeah. When I, when I move away, the microphone is no longer facing my mouth, so that's something to take note of. With that in mind, this is how they sound, and I hope you enjoy watching the video. I hope so. Please enjoy watching the video. If I'm going away from this microphone, the sound is going to sound very horribly. That's something you have to remember. For condenser microphones, the lobe is like very close and you need to make sure that your mount is in less than six centimeters away from it. Six inches, I think. If you were further away from the microphone, it's gonna sound horribly. But on the other hand, shotgun microphones are made to pick up audio from a further distance and they will be performing better if these microphones are out of the frame. You cannot keep this microphone out of the frame and expect a good quality audio. But this on the other hand, yes, you can totally do that. So if that's something of your concern, then you can totally get away with this. That's the conclusion and I hope you listen to the audio samples and let me know in the comments down below which one you prefer, which will be your choice and I hope you get to choose the right one for you without wasting money. Please like, share, subscribe, comment to this video, whatever you like. Until the next video, peace.